Welcome to Petability. I'm your host, Kathy Simons. And I'm your host, Chris Cranston. Our podcast provides interviews and information to help your pets live their best lives. Good morning, Kathy. How are you? Good morning, Chris. I am fantastic today. Do you know what today is? Do tell. Today, August 26th, is National Dog Day. (laughs) There is no better time to talk about the Minson Guide to Veterinary Hospitals than on National Dog Day. That's right. That's right. We have Mr. DeCorey Brown and Dr. Matthew Minson with us today to discuss the Minson Guide to Veterinary Hospitals, which is an app. And these two collaborated to bring potentially life-saving technology to our pets. So it's fantastic. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on our show. Um, let's, let's begin. You know, what was the inspiration developing this technology? Well, first, thanks for having us on the show. And, it, and, it's, and it's an important day to be here. So we're, we're delighted to, to be able to talk about this. I, I had been an emergency responder for many years, and um, most specifically on an urban search and rescue team, uh, Texas Task Force One. It's one of the FEMA teams that goes out to like earthquakes and hurricanes and things to, to look for people and rescue them. One of the, the tasks that I had was actually making sure that we had reception care capabilities as the team moved around at different hospitals. And that included, that was really for, you know, the men and women on the team. But then also, um, we have canine search partners, and they're no less important. In fact, quite frankly, in many cases, they might be more important. And so the idea was to, to make sure that we'd properly done it for them, too. What I found was it was really challenging to, to find 24-7 emergency care capability um, across the country. Depending on where we went, it, it, could be, it could be not only kind of a capricious schedule, but it was often not close. And I, I got to thinking, you know, if this was important for a search canine, um, it's no less important for people's pets and companion animals and sometimes support animals. And so that's really what triggered it. And uh, Jacory is a, a brilliant programmer. And so we, you know, we've had a, a long relationship and, and started talking about was, was this a good idea? And we thought it was. Uh, we, we also did a human specialty hospital care app for people. Um, But we thought, you know, it makes sense to do this also for canines. So today, we're not only going to describe the app and get into those details, but, you know, as you're alluding to why this is so important to have this at our fingertips for us pet parents. So I'm really, really excited to, you know, kind of cover those those topics. Again, tell us a little bit more about like how you two know each other and, and how you teamed up. Give us a little background story. It's a sorted history. I'll let you tell it. I, I, I attended the University of Texas, and I was a pre-med student. So my aunt actually worked with Dr. Mitchell. They were co-workers. And she was like, I, I want you to talk to this guy. Uh, he's an anesthesiologist at my job, and I think it would be uh, good to meet him. So I say, okay. So I go and chat with him, you know, for a few, I think, an hour or so in his office. And it sort of kind of really just, you know, spawned from there. So we continue to stay in touch, and then our relationship just continued to grow and grow. And we've been, you know, I would say friends ever since. Yeah, I, you know, I, the thing is, when, when we were talking about it initially, he he reminded me of me, and it was a it was a really quick affinity, and it's it's really it's only gotten richer and deeper. I think. Yeah, I agree. It, it's like it's it's true. It's like family. I mean, I. I think of him as kind of the child of my heart in many ways. There's not there's nothing more pleasurable, I don't think, than getting a chance to actually work on something important with someone you love. And, and for both of us, this became a this became a real labor of love, and also dedicated to a higher purpose. We, you know, if you if you don't mind, I'll tell an anecdote. It's not it's not a dog anecdote, but we uh, we had a really old cat, and I know this is we we're mostly talking about dogs, but we had a really old cat that we loved a lot, and he was 17 and, and uh, had an embolism. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the night, it was in great pain, uh, we had to go to the vet. I'm a preparedness guy. Uh, I had mapped out where to go in advance. Um, but I, as I thought about it, it was still traumatic. And, and the idea is, let, let's imagine you're on vacation or you're driving and you're away from home and something terrible happens to your dog. They chase down a porcupine at a mm-hmm. national park or something like that. You really want to know where to go 
And so for us, that kind of thing is extremely important to, to making sure that we deliver, you know, a, something mm -hmm. that's easy to use in a time of crisis and accurate. Right. And 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 specialty services as well. Right. They, they often on the app will show that the hospitals have best specialty services. So if you have an emergency like um, in, in large dogs, oftentimes what happens is they, they get uh, a gastric dilatated volvulus, which is called bloat. It's the middle of the night. Um, where do you go? And you need a surgeon. You need somebody who can can accommodate uh, that type of emergency. So we keep talking about this app. Right. And we, we can give a plethora of examples, which I want to you know get into. But mm -hmm. but Jacory, why an app versus you know just a Google search, right? So so to answer your first question, why an app? So everything is now mobile. Um, it is more connective. It is more interactive, and it's more at your fingertips. So mm -hmm. everything now is mobile. If you see the trends of the industry, also in regards to a Google search. A, Technically, Google is really just a search. It's just information that is populated that you can see. It does not mean it is always accurate or dedicated to veterinary searches. You just kind of get back what is fed to, you know, at times it can be accurate, but also it might not be. There's no dedicated data collection to the type right. of information. So it's kind of like, you know, imagine if you're going to a restaurant and you search the restaurant, it might be on there, it might not be. The hours may be on there, they may not be. You're taking that into your own hands. Uh-huh, yeah. And, yes. Yeah, and you're panicked. You're yeah. like... You know, exactly. Yeah. 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 Because then you want something that's a no-brainer, right? That's yeah. easy, that you, know, that you don't have to think about. And I put in things in searches because that's what I'm used to. And I think I found it. And then I realized that it's... Uh, same restaurant name across the country, right? Uh -huh. I'm I'm looking, you know, right. I'm in Massachusetts, you know, I want to find, you know, I've heard about this place and then it's the a same restaurant in California. And that would be horrible if I hit directions and started driving, right? To a veterinary place thinking <laughs> it's, you know, next door and it's not even in the same state. So. Exactly. I, I want to say that uh, the search is only as good as the information you put into it. So, so, so our app does the data parsing for exactly. Them. I like mean, your, that's that's the thing, and, yeah. and and you're really four taps from your destination, <laughs> depending you know depending on where you are, the state, the locality, and then your your three taps there, and then the yes. the next tap shows you where you're going. That's pretty simple in a crisis, mm -hmm. yes. and that was I mean that was we we agreed that that was the design we wanted. Yes. Yes. Can you uh, you think you guys could could walk us through it? Can we walk through what uh, what that looks like? Sure. Yeah. No. So, so I mean, I'll, I'll let you, Corey, talk about you. You open it. You go to the app as you've got it. Uh, yeah. You're obviously going to need to download the app. That's kind of a no-brainer, but I'll say download the app. You'll need to install it, um, and then you'll need to you'll, – you'll subscribe. Um, and then after that, it gives you access, and Jagori can walk you through kind of – I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it's sort of a – it's a looping algorithm that is very simple. I mean, sounds more complicated. It essentially funnels you to your destination. So when you click begin using this app, mm -hmm. you should see special colleges or – It says veterinary uh, schools mm -hmm. and clinics by location. There's just two right. tabs. Correct. Yeah, the vet schools we added because in some you, you mentioned specialty care. So mm. let's say that let's say, because we thought that this was useful too. It's not so much an emergency requirement, but it is when the, the event happens. So let's say that you get a diagnosis with your local vet about about a kind of an esoteric medical problem. It might be good to be also able to just quickly tap and find the local veterinary college because they often have specialty care um, and at the very least can advise you on what you might want to do. So we we added that that piece for the vet colleges. Um, that's really not so much for the emergency use, but it's there for a more enhanced use. The other stuff, um, and, and I'll I'll pitch it back. But I mean, you, so you, you really what you in an emergency you're going to go for location, right? Correct. You would go for location. Mm -hmm. So as you described, we're funneling you to your two different choices. So you can click clinics by location, and that should take you to the fifty states. So indeed, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're 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 in Texas. I mean, if you you know, if you want to go to Alabama or Arkansas or whichever is your choice. So yeah, so you would then click the state that you're in. Okay, so when you click clinics by location, it should give you a list of states, 
and you can click whichever state you're in or whichever state you want to go to, mm-hmm. and it should provide you another list. Indeed, it does. <laughs> okay. And okay. so uh, I know you guys are in Texas, so I clicked on Texas, veterinary hospitals in Texas. I have a list, Austin, College Station, Dallas, El Paso, Fort Worth, Houston, Irving, Louisville, mm-hmm. Mesquite, Round Rock, San Antonio, and Spring. So Texas is a big state, yeah. but so that, that's, that's a lot of places. Yeah, and that goes to our point that it's, it's, not, it's not what you'd expect. That's not saying that that's the only place where there are veterinarians, mm-hmm. but for 24-7 comprehensive emergency care capability for your pet, um, that's your options. We, we didn't list cities that don't have a, a 24-7 vet on this app because we didn't want to confuse people or create a greater search requirement right. for them. That makes sense. So I just clicked on Houston because you're in Houston, right? When I click that, then it brought me to four specific hospitals. And when I click on one of those, it gives me the address, the phone number, and then there's a designation. And this particular one that I clicked on says non-AHA or A-A-H-A. Could you explain to our listeners what that designation means? Yeah, it, it's it's really not. It, it's a designation based on um, the American Animal Hospital Association, and, and it doesn't. And just because a clinic is not is, is a non AAHA, it is not a, a commentary on the clinic. Um, it, it simply means that that we when we were looking at reliable sources, and, and again, you know, this is a really dynamic environment, especially during COVID. A lot of vet clinics that were twenty four seven. Quit being 24/7. One vet school uh, quit doing after-hours care. So, so what we're looking at is a really dynamic environment, and you know that's part of what we do is kind of keep it up to date. And it, and we we try to do that on a, a monthly basis. The the thing is, it is a dynamic a dynamic environment. The American Animal Hospital Association has a, a roster of hospitals, and so if that matters to people, we wanted to provide that additional bit of information just so that they could have it. And if they wanted to then look that up or further research it, they could do that. Right, right. And I know, and Kathy knows a little bit about this, we we just say, aha, um, Mm -hmm. in in the biz, when you're in the biz, and it's a very Mm -hmm. rigorous um, process. So, you know, I said it's not a commentary on their quality of care, because ultimately that is dependent on the the doctors there, the veterinarians there, and the and the staff. So some just choose not to go through that vigorous, you know, process. But those that have have, you know, certainly uh, gone through the hoops and barrels to to gain that designation. Yeah, I'm interested to find out. So the I mean, what about exotic animals? So what about our bird people and our rabbit people? You can't just you can't just show up at a veterinary practice with with your cockatoo, right? You really should find somebody who's qualified to see small animals like birds, guinea pigs, rabbits. Is there is there something on the app that's accessible for the people that have non-dog and cats pets? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that, you know, rather than us try to again, this is an emergency use tool or a, right. a planning. Yeah, it's a crisis tool. No, no, you're you're right. you're absolutely right. I, th- I think what one of the things that we 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 if you in answer to your question is there something on the app that can help with that the answer yeah. is yes it's called a phone number just just like with any I mean you know yeah. just and I'm not being cute when I say it but it's really true yeah. you want to call yeah. ahead because you mentioned small animals and exotics but what about big animals or or like big right. cat exotics if you, yeah. you know, they, they need to be prepared um, to mm-hmm. receive a cougar or something like that, if if that's what you're bringing I mean, in. Even your farm animals, they have to prepare to see your your goats yeah. and your horses, and you you don't just show up with your horse. You know? that's, that's a very good point. Yeah, no, no, that's why that's why we have it. Is you know the, the idea is also you know what we're talking about is capability of hospitals, and this is true for humans as well as animal hospitals. But but we're not talking about availability. So right. so let's say that you got the app and yesterday afternoon everything was copacetic, but today they had a water main burst in in the building, and and they and they can't see that day patients. Well, yeah. that's why you call. I mean, the yeah. the idea is here is not just use the app. The app is a starting point. Phone numbers say hi, I've got X Y Z, and I'm heading your way. Mm-hmm. They may say, oh, we just had a fire um, or yeah. something like that. So. So to your own protection, you want to do that and, and for your yeah. pet. 
Yeah, and I think that um, you made a point, an interesting point earlier about COVID. So we, and I don't know if everybody in the United States is experiences, experiencing this at the moment, but in the Northeast, we've actually had uh, veterinary practices that have uh, that are closing one day a week, that are turning people away because of shortages, staff shortages, and some of our large hospitals are shutting down their ERs at a certain time because they're at full capacity. So having that number available to call them is important ahead of time, but also when they can't take you, having that next number in line is going to be key because you may not be able to get into the emergency room. You've got to, you've got to find out ahead of time, at least up in this part right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll go, I'll go one better. I mean, we, we live in Houston and, mm -hmm. and, we're, we're celebrating the anniversary of, of Hurricane Harvey, which which was a devastating event for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it was a terrible weather event. It had it had impact on human life. Technically, it took the infrastructure out and, and for quite a while. And most disasters do that. So this app actually has an application. If you're if you're you know having to to uh, you're, if you're involved in a kind of a mini diaspora, getting out of your community because you're escaping wildfires in the West, or if you're fleeing floodwaters as we're seeing across the country right now, or if it's anything else and you're having to move, this is an additional tool for you to help support your your pet and, and your, your, frankly, your animal partners in your life. And, and we think that's important too. It's very important. And and when I look at the, um, the cost to subscribe, very reasonable. Can we talk about that a little bit? Totally reasonable, yeah. <laughs> we actually had a discussion about that. We, uh, we wanted it to range from people that don't have the means by this app up until those who can, you know, purchase whatever they want, because ideally everyone has a pet or a lot of people have pets. Right. And their pets are their hearts. Right. So we wanted everyone to be able to, you know, if they needed it, because uh, your your finances shouldn't limit your ability to take care of an, an animal. Right. So it, it speaks to access for all. And it also, you know, you just kind of mentioned in passing earlier, like keeping it up to date. That. Right cost that monthly fee of only 99 cents so for less than a dollar a month ensures that you have the most accurate information because you guys are constantly updating it and making sure that on a monthly basis you have the correct information so you know we recently saw this with the human uh healthcare app uh, or the human hospital app that there were some interface issues with certain types of devices and and Jacory pointed it out. So we posted on the website. If you have this type of you know phone, um, let us know if you're having any issues. It really isn't our and our end, but we can help troubleshoot it and get it fixed. And we did. Um, but but little things happen because we live in a very technologically advanced, rapid, dynamic, fluid kind of world now that, that, you know, the idea here is to try to keep up with all the changes that are taking place. And that's what the updates to the app are about. That's also why we say, though, we're, we're, we're pretty clear, just as we talked about it. When you use it, you as soon as you decide where you're going, make that call just to make sure that nothing else has changed. Right. Because we've seen month to month pretty big dynamic shifts right. in, in some hospitals capability. And it's not like they're reaching out to you to say, hey, we're changing our hours tomorrow. Yeah, wish. <laughs> we, we as the users, because obviously I've downloaded this app, we need to do our due diligence and, and take that extra step, which we can do even in route, you know, or as we're getting prepared or what have you. Um, I did want to ask, uh, and this would be, I think, to you, Ja'Cory, from the app, can we click on the phone number? and then directly call or do we have to copy and paste or memorize or and same with the address can we go right to you know click on the the address and go to directions like on google maps or something so you should be you you can copy and paste the address so from from a not to get into the technology yeah. aspect of it um that will require a different type of programming we want uh -huh. it to be available for both devices both android and also Apple, because yep. again, we're shooting for as most as most coverage as possible. Yep. So because of that, uh, you won't be able to directly click the address or and to directly port into your phone or maps uh, application. However, we made it that you can copy and paste it, so that makes it a little bit easier on the user. So it'd yeah. be a similar like double click or hold your finger; it'll go copy, and then you can just directly import it to your your search or yes. phone yeah. phone. 
Okay, good. Because I want <laughs> don't laugh at me, to Corey. I'm a professional <laughs> podcaster. Can't you tell? <laughs> ideally, ideally, what what Corey's talking about. Ideally, that's something. Let's say you were planning a trip. You knew you were going to uh, on vacation. You, you might, you might, as part of your pre prep, you know, actually preload that number just in case. Maybe mm-hmm. do a, maybe do a little, um, and then you'd have it. And then worst case yeah. scenario, you just mm-hmm. it's a tap. That said, um, you know, people, you know, people are planning on vacation, so they're not. It's not an operation overlord. They're not getting ready for that. So you know, the idea is to. <laughs> So, so yeah, I think I think that there's a I think the app is a very simple tool that can be used in a lot of different ways to streamline your needs in a time of crisis. I know. I think we did a podcast uh, not that long ago about um, being prepared with your first aid kit, and I yeah. think that this should be part of the whole preparedness for for first aid. Have your first aid kit prepared. Go back, listen to that podcast about what to put in your first aid kit. And download this app to your phone. Now you're prepared. Now you have everything. You have the tools that you need, and you have the app that you need to be able to find someone to help you. Uh, yeah. So I think that's excellent. I think it's an excellent tool to add to your um, your first aid, you know, plan, um, emergency, or vacation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think a first aid and emergency evacuation kit. Right. You know? Exactly. So yeah. you have all the things. It's mobile. You can just grab it and go. Right you there. Know? So yeah. not only a tool to use, you know, where you where you are, you know, in your home, but also to be able to to take with you. And the, the mm-hmm. app certainly speaks to that. So I'm looking at my notes here to see um, what else I wanted to talk about. So, Matt, you just mentioned, uh, you know, again, pre-planning not only for, you know, where you are, but where you're traveling to, it can be used as you're traveling. Um, Some of our listeners know that in 2020, during COVID, I was in an RV for um, going into 21, a total of 140 days traveling around the country. So, and we traveled with, you know, I don't know if you guys can see these little munchkins over there. Yeah. So that's Baxter and Julep. And, uh, Fortunately, we did not need, you know, to, to go to a vet hospital, um, you know, during our trip. So, you know, knock on wood. But, you know, having this app then would have certainly given me solace, you know, as we're traveling around. And um, I was also thinking because right now I'm in the throes of moving um, about an hour, hour and a half away from where I used to live. So I don't know anything about that new area. You know, right. so I need to start, you know, studying and preparing for where I'm going to and, you know, being able to, to reach our vet emergently, you know, once we we move. Um, and you also mentioned I noticed uh, in your you know, part of your um, verbiage when when you download the app and, and it talks about how to use and things like that, even like your day trips. Right. People don't think about that. Like, oh, we're just mm-hmm. going a half hour to you know, hike in the woods today with our friends. Always when it happens, hiking in the woods. Yes. 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 So, you know, again, knowing where to go that's close, you know, to where you're going to be and things like that. So are you constantly adding um, venues uh, or is, do you feel like it's comprehensive in terms of the hospitals and things that are currently in the app or is it, are you continuing to update and add hospitals, I guess, is, is one of my questions. Well, the, the updating actually is, is a pretty vigorous process. Uh, it's the secret sauce to the app, really, is, is knowing yeah. where to go and get that information because it's labor intensive. Um, I mean, you're talking, you're talking about, in, in some cases, it's, it's rather simple, but then there are hospitals as the non-AAHA hospitals. Um, those are the ones that, that you know, take a little more footwork. Um, I, I'd, I'd offer that if, if people are interested, they can go to www.mincensguide.com, um, and it's all lowercase one word, um, and, and it, it actually kind of explains, describes how to use the app. It actually has tiles and visuals on how to use it. So, so there, and it also has a lot, a little bit of updates. Uh, if we if we see something that's changing, or like I say, a law changed in a state, and the requirements were different. Because, you know, there's one thing for professional credentialing, but then states themselves actually determine scopes of care and things like that. So that's an important distinction. We don't get into that in the app because people don't care in a crisis. Right. But it's, 
it's important in, uh, for us in preloading that information into the app and making sure that what we've got is stuff that is as accurate as possible at the time of, of the upload um, with an Matt, understanding it's dynamic. Matt, if you go to that website, can you also download the app for humans so they can find? Is it, can you, I get both you, of those there? Yeah. You absolutely can. Uh, www.mincensguide.com uh, will w actually gives you links, hot links to both the human, that is the Mincens Guide to Specialty Hospitals, which is the name for the for the for the human one, which which looks at things like, you know, cardiac and stroke and trauma and burn and pediatric specialty hospitals across the country. And it also tells you the levels because they're very different in, in human terms. There's levels of different kinds of care. Um, and it explains all that and gives you links. The um, the thing in the in a in a pet in a pet application or in an animal or a veterinary application is it's pretty straightforward because you know veterinarians tend to throw a wider net with species, and, and so it, in a, in that way it's simpler. Um, but but in terms of actually making sure that all that data gets in, it's more complicated because it's a little tougher to search and find all that information and get it into the app. That, that's one of the beauties of the app is it's there when you need it. And I think there's there's a movement now, at least again in the Northeast, that there's going to be, and there started happening, uh, urgent care veterinary places versus emergency places, so that uh, they can take that over, maybe that overspell that happens when they come into the emergency place. So I think that you're probably going to be seeing that you're going to have to need to put up another, you're going to have to put another update in when these become more uh, more popular. At least in the Northeast, I've seen one or two. Um, I don't know about the rest of the United States, and I'm not sure exactly what uh, urgent care sees just yet, but I think we'll see how it plays out probably soon in the next year or so. I have hey, a comment. Oh, go mm -hmm. ahead, Matt. Well, I was going to that's actually a really good point. The, the, the thing is, the more complex the reading has to be during a crisis for yeah. a person with a distressed an animal that's, that's yowling in pain or that maybe is writhing or that right. they're, they're worried about, the, the more difficult the app becomes to use, and so um, we 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 opted for a, we opted for a simple approach initially mm -hmm. to say if you if you see this this uh, this icon and you tap on it and you see that hospital you can you can just go with that um, you should call in advance or as your mm -hmm. transfer transits um, but yeah no I think that there's I think there's potential I think it has to almost be a different category even or maybe mm -hmm. even a different I think so yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have a comment on that. A, a former client who's become a very good friend um, was familiar with where to go. Her dog had been uh, vomiting. He was a youngish puppy, like less than a year old, vomiting, vomiting. And of course, you know, this starts in the early evening. And when she realizes that he's not stopping, you know, it's like 11 o'clock at night. She's like, you know, this is this is not right. I'm really worried about my pet. So she gets him in the car and takes Bentley to the nearest emergency hospital. And, you know, to your point, she's calling en route. And they're like, oh, okay, well, you're already on your way. She said yes. And they're like, okay, well, proceed. But if your dog isn't actively dying, we're, we're, we're not going to be able to see him. Uh -huh. And so... She she went to the hospital. She sat in the parking lot. She talked to people on the phone that could give her advice, like, when's the last time you vomited? Okay, um, you know, do this, do that. And she spent hours in the parking lot until he basically stopped vomiting and then drove home. They never did see her pet, you know, and that would be more like an urgent care situation, right, where that it would fill that gap because... They had to triage and they did, it's not even to the point it was five years ago where you bring your pet in the door and then they they admit and triage and, you know, decide who's the most, most urgent to see what is a true emergency and what is not. Because lay people have no idea. You know, some things can look pretty benign and it's an actual emergency and vice yeah. versa. You might see blood all over that white poodle's fur and think, oh, my God, they're bleeding out. And it's a little nick, you know, so it's it's a tough call. And I'd say better to be, you know, safe than sorry. And, you know, to your point, use the app, call the number, get the information, you know, because they'll talk to you. A good veterinary, um, you know, if they have uh, the trained reception staff, they can 
kind of guide you, you know, can you wait till morning? Can you, you know, or get them here now, you know, depending on the symptoms. Well, you, you speak to something that's interesting. Uh, we don't we don't have a, a 911 veterinary capability in the United States like we like like, like we enjoy for Pete. When you call 911 for a human being, you're going to get an emergency medical dispatcher on the phone. Right. And that individual is going to ask questions based on an, a standardized algorithm, and they're going to potentially communicate with you things that you can do on scene while you're waiting for the ambulance. They're also going to communicate to the ambulance the information that they're getting so that they can determine how critical the, the case is, whether they have to go lights and sirens or they, they don't have to go quite as urgently, a, a lot of things. We don't enjoy that for for animals, um, and, and that's not a gripe. I'm just stating that that's the way it is. Yeah. So in this case, the app serves in a way like the 911 call for you. You call that clinic or that hospital, and you tell them what's going on. Even before you jump in the car, they may be able to tell you to do certain things or help triage on the phone so that you can either take action at the time or perhaps as quick as you can. People don't even think about the potential, right? right? And so as I was preparing uh, to to talk with you guys, I started thinking back in my life and various kind of animal emergencies, you know, that, that happened. And uh, a couple happened when I was in Colorado. One, over at friend's house, having a good time. They had a larger, like, chow-type mix, Reggie and a little mini poodle, Orion. They'd lived together happily for years, and something triggered, and Rig Reggie actually attacked Orion and got him in the head and injured his eye. And of course, again, it's like nine o'clock at night on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and you know, this is years ago. This is before we had even, you know, like Google and all of that, right? Yeah. And so what do we do? We get in the car, we just start driving to vet practices that we knew of. You drive up, lights are off, you're pounding on the door, nothing. Go to the next place, you know. And fortunately, Orion was fine and, you know, but it was terrifying and time consuming. So, you know, that's that's one story. Um, another is uh, when, um, with these two, actually, again, there always happens in the most, unopportune time and uh baxter started having breathing issues and you know they're only six now so this was like when he was four or five and it was getting worse and worse who do i call my friend kathy over there who's a great <laughs> veterinary technician i'm like he's like gurgling and coughing and gagging and she's like i think you might want to take him to an emergency and he had aspirated and so he ha was getting aspiration pneumonia. When we got him there, he, ha he had a mega esophagus, which they didn't know if it was permanent or temporary from the inflammation. Um, but again, I start calling family and friends because I'm panicked. That may not have been the wisest thing. I probably should have gone to Minton's, you know, app and, and figured out the closest emergency room and, and asked them, you know, if I should bring him in. And again, he ended up being fine. It was a temporary situation. He's never aspirated again, knock on wood. And, uh, and his esophagus is normal. But, you know, those are just, you know, a couple of, of examples that, that, you know, I've thought of. Another that happened in Colorado was I was just driving along after dark with a friend on kind of this back road. Sounds sketchy, doesn't it? No, unfortunately, this dog had been hit by a car. Mm -hmm. And so we, we saw it, you know, lying on the side of the road. You know, evidently, you know, these people, you know, whoever hit it maybe didn't know or they certainly didn't stop. So we get out and, you know, we're, we're trying. And then a, a, another car pulled up and it was a pickup. And we were able to carefully, like, get the dog on, on like a blanket and get it into the pickup. And then I rode in the back of the pickup to the closest vet hospital, which was the clinic that I was used to going to. Had no idea if they were open and knock on the door and the, uh, one single vet was there, just happened to be there, came out from the back and, you know, said, what's going on? We explained the situation. You know, he said, bring the dog in because, you know, of course he's not going to say, I can't 
help you. Uh, you know, we kind of put him in a in a sticky wicket there. But, you know, again, didn't have the app at that time, just flying by the seat of our pants. And so this just it would give great solace, you know, today oh. to know that this is available. As a veterinary technician and someone who has seen thousands of emergencies, the thing that is most important in this situation is not to delay care. And that's what this app is going to do. There may have been dogs and cats that would have had different outcomes from their emergencies had their care not been delayed. And not by any fault of the owner. It's the middle of the night, it's Christmas, whatever, but it's that delay, you know, that time, it's time. We need that time. We need to get you in an emergency into the clinic so we can start right away. And this this cuts down that delay. This makes it easy to get care immediately. And as a veterinary technician, I can't tell you how important that is. Time. I need you to come in now. now. Yeah. <laughs> Things like uh, heat stroke, hit by cars, traumas, uh, blow. Those things need to be seen immediately. And and, and uh, the outcomes can be different if if too much time has gone by. Right. So I was going to say, you know, there's an old adage. I, I know you know this that in, in medicine of any stripe, um, that that a crisis is going to occur on a Friday at nine on a three day weekend. And Absolutely, so, <laughs> it always is. Um, you know, or it's it's definitely when your your vet's on vacation or your you know it's Christmas. Um, and, and around those holidays, we have so many emergencies, pancreatitis and vomiting and stuff like that around Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and chocolate, you know, ingestion of chocolate. You're right. That's when the emergency oh, happens. Yeah. And, and you know, in life saving, but also like uh, organ saving, if you will. I mean, Kathy, you're a blind, you know, dog mm -hmm. expert. And, you know, to the point that I was saying earlier with Reggie and Orion, you know, that that injury was to his eye. And if we hadn't gotten him yeah, he could have lost his eye, right? It could become infected. It could, you know, whatever. So, you know, the outcome was better because, you know, we were fortunate enough to be able to get him there in time. But right. so, right. gentlemen, this has been amazing. Do you have Thank any you. closing remarks, any last thoughts, a pearl of information that you want to leave our listeners with? Yeah, I think what I'd say is just, 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 you know, we're open also to, to people's ideas. Um, as you guys mentioned, urgent care. If there are folks that use the app or visit the website and they have thoughts or they have they have an insight, or they say, "Hey, you guys should really look at you know cat dialysis centers or something." Uh, and, and you know that's that's stuff we want to hear because that's actually how we help improve the world a little bit. And so we're we're that's why we did this. We wanted to we wanted to make people's lives better and their pets. And Jacory eloquently talked about our price point and why we did what we did. It was there to to make a service really. And so we're pretty dedicated to it. So if, if people visit and they have thoughts, we really want to hear them. Is that fair? Thank you. And where can people find you? www.mincensguide.com. Excellent. Excellent. And we'll put that in our show notes. And hey, Chris, yes. uh, because Nash, today's National Dog Day, I think that this is the perfect opportunity to mention our sponsor. Heads up, Pets Water Collars. <laughs> I love their management. I do too. They're fantastic. They are fantastic. You know, we, we talk about this all the time. We pick sponsors based on our passion and, and they're equally as passionate about their product as we are. Uh, this product saves dogs from drowning. So the website for Heads Up Pets Water Collars is Save Dogs from Drowning. Kathy, I have recently sent you many pictures and videos of the little munchkins over here because we happen to be in uh, a lovely airbnb on the sea here in the northeast and uh, we went kayaking and we were on the beach and they were wearing their their heads up pets water collars and it was awesome what you couldn't see in that video is that as we're kayaking julep was going farther and farther and farther and farther to the very tip of the front of the kayak thought the little buoys in the harbor <laughs> and there were many of them were some sort of creature that she needed to investigate thing i knew boom off the kayak she goes and yeah. swims out to the yeah. to the buoy and then she's like oh i guess that's that's not a bird after all and came back but yeah. you know i was a little bit 
you know, panicky because there was really nothing I could do. And, uh, but, you know, I knew she was safe and, you know, hauled her back into the kayak and right. all was well. It feels good to know that she was safe. So visit Heads Up Pets Water Collar at SaveDogsFromDrowning.com and use that promo code when ordering PetPod22. That's P-E-T-P-O-D 22, all capital letters. You'll get a 10% discount off your order and support the show at the same time. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our show. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Petability Podcast. For more information about Kathy's books and living with blind dogs, please visit EnableYourPet.com. Thank you, and please tune in next time.